actor Liam Neeson about to throw down with a pack of killer wolves in the new movie The Grey. In the film, a group of men struggle to survive after their plane crashes in the remote Alaskan wilderness. Well, when you think of the history of us as human beings, we're only like 150,000 years since we came down from the trees, if one wants to believe that. And, uh, you know, in the history of the planet, that's, that's, that was just last Tuesday. These fights with nature and ice flows and polar bears and stuff, it's all on our DNA, you know. Uh, that's, that's what I believe. It's, uh, it was literally last Tuesday when we were fighting these animals for, for food and for, for defense. Don't move. Stay right back at them. In this case, that animal is Canis lupus, the gray wolf. I've never encountered a real wolf, but, but certainly film footage and stuff. And you, you look into their eyes, it's like you're, you're looking into something quite magnificent, scary and powerful and wise, learned, and ancient. And hugely misunderstood. Mankind's history with the wolf is long and complicated. We both feared and hunted them, domesticated, and now protect them. We have folk tales and myths that both demonize and revere them, and in many ways the gray is just another iteration of those legends. It's certainly deliberate, and I, I guess uh, to make it to draw a comparison, I would say, uh, you know, Steven Spielberg's Jaws. I mean, that shark was was uh, certainly huge and, and scary, but it was also mythological almost, you know. And I think our wolves have got a little bit of, I wouldn't say monster, but, but they're, they have another kind of intelligence. The wolves in the film are how we imagine wolves to be, which it's, they're not. I mean, they're really not. I've worked with wolves before. They're, you know, they're, they're majestic, gorgeous creatures. A lot of them shy away from human beings. There's a little sense of, uh, of magic with these guys. I mean, they are bigger, they're darker. They, they, they sound like bull elephants. They don't sound like wolves. You know, they, they, their growl is much deeper. Uh, and, and that's by design. That's not to say attacks don't occur. According to the International Wolf Center, while wolf attacks are extremely rare in North America, there have been some recent, well-documented cases. And accounts of wolves killing people persist in India, Russia, and parts of Central Asia. We hear a lot already, hey, wolves don't attack people. And it, I can show you 10 stories about super packs of wolves in Russia, uh, you know, that they become rogue. They go through these towns, they kill domestic animals, they do all kinds of things. 99% of the time, they don't do that. You know, wolves will stay away from human beings. But there are cases where wolves attack humans. Throughout Europe, the wolf was once the scourge of the countryside. Assaults gave rise to folk stories like the Beast of Gabadon, described as having massive teeth and reddish fur. Sources claim the beasts were responsible for more than 200 attacks, killing more than 100 people. In one 1917 New York Times article colorfully describes Russian and German soldiers signing a brief armistice during World War I to fight wolf packs that were attacking them. Today, many biologists believe the majority of these fatal attacks involved either wolf-dog hybrids, which are less timid around people, or rabies, which causes an exceptionally aggressive state in wolves and ran rampant in Europe until the 20th century. But even healthy wild wolves are more likely to attack when they become accustomed to people. That's according to the Norwegian Institute for Nature Research. For Discovery News, I'm Jorge Rivas.